You know how you know you are more? Look in the mirror. That's it. So There's not that. More? Yes, I'm a more. And individuals are missing the point. All right. Now, when I grew, I grew up speaking Spanish. Okay. Now, I was in a club one time, and these these sisters who were Puerto Rican, all right, they they're using the word Moreno, okay, and they also use the word Negro, at the same time. I said, no, don't don't call me Negro. It would be Moreno based on that language. But again, if I'm using Latin base, if I want to give a person respect or something like that, that's darker skin, you would say Moreno. But if you want to insult them, you would say Negro, okay. But if you want to insult them, you would say Negro, okay? If I want to give a person respect or something like that, that's darker skin, you would say Moreno. Who are you? You don't know. Don't tell me Negro, that's nothing. What were you before the white man named you a Negro? And where were you? And what did you have? What was yours? What language did you speak then? What was your name? It couldn't have been Smith or Jones. Or Bunch or Powell, that wasn't your name. They don't have those kind of names where you and I came from. No, what was your name? And why don't you now know what your name was then? Where did it go? Where did you lose it? Who took it? And how did he take it? What tongue did you speak? How did the man take your tongue? Where is your history? How did the man wipe out your history? How did the man, what did the man do to make you as dumb? As you are right now. Let us say this. If you ask the average child in elementary school today, and particularly even a few generations back, uh, how did your family become known as Smith? They will tell you. Either, oh, that's my grandma's name, or my grandma's side, or my grandpa's name. And you ask them, well, where did they get it from? Oh, they got that from the slave master, which means they're not ignorant. Which means they knew the truth. They did nothing to correct it, did they? That's a contract. It's called acquiescence. So it automatically gives their corporate state jurisdiction, which, which the modern word used for the slave is called ward, W-A-R-D. Ward of the state. And state, not the land, state the corporation. Then you have boards of governors that govern all the states and the commonwealths. Their responsibility is to protect the stock, stock, S-T-O-C-K, of the citizens. Negroes, blacks, and colors are stocks, starting with the birth certificate and any other contract you make with them. If you don't understand that, get that together, real quick. And everybody knows that, but that kind of spoils the game that they've been playing on our people. You see the point? When they uh, incorporated turn the republic into a corporation in order to put the Moors later, uh, as they did earlier, solidify the 14th Amendment artificial person in the state of Delaware as Christian property. This is why such persons is called Negroes, Black, and Coloreds, and whatever they call themselves this week, can't vote with them names that don't belong to them, except that the overseer, or what you call the CEO, through the Senate, agrees that their cattle can vote as three-fifths persons because they have no name and nationality. When you understand these, the history from a law perspective, your view will change from it just being some historical flaw or some little dirty trick that the Europeans do. You would need to understand its political ramifications. Because you transact business in another man's name, don't talk about estates and don't talk about property because you don't even own your own body. And this is where, under the Christian Black Codes, where they set up where the marriage license is registered in the Department of Commerce, then registered in the Department of Orphans, and this is where your children, even before they're born, become wards of the state, which is a legal term for nice slave. And see, nobody's offended because they know that most of our people don't read law, and so they just hear the word and it's, it's interesting, you know. <laughs> and then the scholars ain't gonna tell them because they playing this black game. Do you understand? When they know these people aren't black. Black History Month you find ridiculous. Why? You're going to relegate my history to a month? Oh, come well, on. What do you on. do with yours? What, which month is White History Month? <laughs> no, well, no. well, come on. Tell me. Well, uh, I'm Jewish. Okay. Which I'm month is Jewish History Month? Uh, there isn't one. Oh. Oh. Why not? Yeah. Do you want one? No, no. No, I, 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 I don't either. 
I don't want a Black History Month. Black history is American history. How are we going to get rid of racism? And stop still... talking about it. I'm going to stop calling you a white man. I'm going to stop calling you a white man. Yeah. And I'm going to ask you to stop calling me a black man. And I'm going to ask you to stop calling me a black man. And individuals are missing the point. Because you answer to such stupid words like Negro and color and black. You have no nationality. Negro is not a nationality. Some lazy Portuguese or Spaniard took an adjective and made a noun out of it. Colored is not a nationality. Negro is a word that was made up for us, not by uh, we ourselves, but by our slave master during slavery time. Here's my question. On self-identification, because you mentioned, you know, the other question was based on people self-identifying or claiming to self-identify as they were black, right? Um, in light of the fact, and it is a fact, in light of the fact that every social um, science organization, every social science organization, right, Every anthropological organization all disavow the race, the racial terms, black, white, non-white, yellow, red, brown, as being totally unscientific and inventions of Europeans for the purpose of perpetual European world dominance under the term white supremacy and manifest destiny. How can you, as an intelligent man, claim or, or persistently cling to a non-scientific term that you did not invent or our people did not invent? Because that's why you won't see any brother from Africa or Asia come here or again talking about crayon colors. They will use their nationality. You know, if they're from Nigeria, they won't even say they're African. They'll say Nigerian. Some Zimbabwe. Or he cooked up Egyptian. You 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 understand what I'm saying to you? Mm -hmm. He's from um from Lebanon on the north side. So I'm Lebanese. You don't say I'm light skinned yellow guy. That stuff only goes here. I am proud to be the first American president to come to Kenya. And of course I'm the first Kenyan American to be president of the United States. That goes without saying. The name of a people must relate them instantaneously to land, history, and culture. <laughs> that goes without saying. Anytime you call a people, name a people, and fail to relate them back to land, history, and culture, you have called them out of their name. Now, uh, people of India, you have people in India who are darker than people in Africa. Yes. They're not called Negroes. And individuals are missing the point. That's only because they haven't been taught. They're still little boys and girls. Of course, their ego is in front of that because they're grown men. They swing wieners and spit. <laughs> you know, $2, which ain't money. You, know, you can't tell them anything. It's understandable you let them have that. However, the world was feeding off of them. And the conditions of ours like this is setting the course of our events and our sociology. Because when we walk down the street, they assume any one of us is, is Negro. Because they want you to think it's an identity. Color means actually artificial person, means a fake. Singular lacum, as distinguished from that which is real. So they need promoters to make you think it's real, to take you out of the human family. Now you come under the black codes, this is where your abuses come from legally. Because it's an agreement. Because every man, woman, and child must honor their mothers and fathers. You're no different. I like, I, we like to think we are. But you're really not different. And they treat us accordingly and then we have to go through all this BS to prove ourselves because our brothers and sisters by a mass degree are incompetent. 
because there's a set of rules of laws of the Black Codes and the Negro Acts that go with such persons. And since there's so many of them that are in this category, they're just assuming that everyone that looks like this is a Negro, bruh, bruh. which is a classification. And then most of them are, are openly saying that they're Black, which is an oral contract. As long as our people are classified as Negro colored Black, they have no judicial standard, no standing in law, because they're not in their proper person. But they don't know that because others have been teaching them that that's a nation in Africa. And so, no, the fact that they're even convoluted with it at all in law makes them what you would call dead in the eyes of law. What do you think, Morgan? Is this political correctness gone too far? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have a tendency to do that anyway. I mean, you get politically correct. Um, Stuff happens that you don't want to happen. I all of a sudden became an African. <laughs> correctness, African American. I'm not African. An American. I'm not African. An American. But I know my roots, and I ain't come to Kinte. And individuals are missing the point. Africa is not our home. Let me let that hang in the atmosphere for a while. I said at this gathering of the masters, Africa is not your home. But some adults have difficulty handling that. I'm a mole and got sis enough to know I'm a mole and ain't going to never argue with you that I'm not a mole and wouldn't come in your house or come among you and say I'm a mole if I didn't feel in my heart, in my mind, in my soul that I am. If you don't understand that, get that together real quick and recognize how you've been miseducated, not just by Europeans, but by your own. These people know that you're not black. They don't doubt it. They know that you're not black. And they know that you're Moors. And individuals are missing the point. Because the laws that govern humanity come from nations. It doesn't come from a box of crayons. So how do you argue with a man who thinks that crayons is how people are identified and then you know the man knows his nations and he's sitting there debating with him what black people are and all this stuff and trying to defend it. You, for you to stand there even arguing with him indicates that you got two donkeys. <laughs> no, in law. However, that's your brother and you love him. You don't want him to go into that, but he want to fight you because you won't call him black. Okay, okay. By, pheno by phenotype, are you a more by phenotype? No. Because a more yeah. doesn't exist. Thank it's a European you. word. Okay. I am not going are you to black? play. I am a person. Black is You're, a okay. culture. So black comes out of English. The word itself, we're getting it from English, right? I, um, I In fact, you know what? How about, you know, we're not, okay, how about this? Because I don't want to argue with, y'all my elders, okay? We're on the same page. He thinks that you're attacking him when actually you're attacking the brand that the Europeans use to steal his birthright. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, he's talking about power that he don't have. It's an oxymoron. You gotta learn how to disassociate yourself from the words that you've grown accustomed to using to identify yourself. The human beings aren't crayons, but some adults have difficulty handling that. Because you answer to such stupid words like Negro and color and black. You have no nationality. You can't just be black. That means you're dead. Legally. I'm a black minority. I'm a person that's a black minority. Either way you go, you're locking yourself into some stuff you don't need to be in. You gotta learn how to disassociate yourself from the words that you've grown accustomed to using to identify yourself. So when the people know that black and white are legal statuses, people right. who are Negro, black, and colored are classed together because it's a classification of people who have no rights. The brandings is to keep them divided from each other. Because if they all went in one direction, they would be empowered, even under a brand. Mm -hmm. do, do you understand what I'm saying? Although there would be certain limited international rights, they would have power even if they all agree to the same brand. But they don't even know it's a brand. And they don't know that the brand disallowed them to inherit anything. 
Because you transact business in another man's name, don't talk about estates and don't talk about property because you don't even own your own body. I could take you right into law book and prove it to you. But our people don't deal with law books because that's the right man's stuff. That's your stuff. Mm -hmm. And Europeans ruling you with your own stuff because you've abandoned it. Our mothers and fathers are the founders of civilization. And we are the direct descendants of Asiatic Africans who are descendants of them. And you give our people civilization information and they start talking about that somebody's belief, that's that white man stuff, and then dismiss it. And then they're back in the nigger suit. Then they want to complain. You understand? The Europeans ruling you with your own stuff. And as soon as you understand that you're the white man, he's the black man, and he traded places with you, and that their legal statuses, <sighs> it's hard to get our people, because we're creatures of habit, and we think that black is some section of Africa. <laughs> well, it's true. <laughs> I just want to know, what would, what would the argument be to those who say, the law don't mean nothing? Paperwork don't mean nothing. Contracts is something that the white man created, See, they so they don't need now, to honor listen, that. Now look at this. Because they just big this and bad. This is why, and, even like on this lesson, yeah, we show them what white man or free white person really is. We know that they think that white man means a European. That's the assumption annotated, right? Mm -hmm. That's the assumption. They don't even know that Europeans weren't called white man until the Knights of Columbus, who caused Klan oath in 1854 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and Chicago. Uh, Illinois. What were they referred to before red, that? Red, rednecks. Red okay. Red man. All right. Now, as a matter of fact, when you go into world history, you go into European history, to Europeans themselves. In up until the 1800s, matter of fact, in the early 1800s, not into to the mid 1800s, they didn't even refer to themselves even by the jurisdictional national names in general. All Europeans collectively were generally called Christians. Christians, yeah. And Under this is Christian another don't. thing about history and sociology and anthropology that our people need to be taught because they don't know by claiming to be Christians, they just abandon their birthrights again. Because they think it's a spiritual system. They don't know it's a political system. Mm. So these, if, if we don't fix these things with our people, we can't fix the other problems, these symptoms, which is rooted in these basic civil problems. They don't know principles of civilization. They just keep on saying, uh, the black man was the founder of civilization. No, the black man is a slave. Because that's what the category is. Hmm. When you talk about the Asiatics or Africans that are free people, you, you, you must use their national names. The distinction between, say, an African, sorry, you, you're African, right? Or Asiatic African, right? And if she's not a slave, then if I ask her her political political allegiance, she's going to give me her constitution of her nation, she's going to name her nation, and she's going to give me a name that, that is a pedigree trace or a noble title. And she say, black, already, she's a category, already know that she has no nation. And there ain't no law to protect her. She just confessed it herself. Mm -hmm. Our people don't know that because somebody told them that human beings are crayons and they believed it. And the rest of them think Santa Claus is real. Mm -hmm. But you and bunny rabbits lay chicken eggs on Easter. You don't debate with them and you don't try to argue with them. You try to explain if they'll listen. But if they don't, you leave them alone because you can't help them. And there's no need to tell them anything else to law or rights or inheritances because it don't apply to them. Um, overseer scholars get this black white paradigm from that's totally fictitious. It's for servitude. Are we clear? For instance, like when our people agree to be black people, they come under the Christian black codes that was set up in 1868 when they closed the Freedmen's Bureau. That's an agreement, and those codes apply. That's where your abuse comes from, because there's no such people. It's a code system for Christian property. And individuals are missing the point. Do you understand it? Then you understand why they incorporated you as a, as a being. And it doesn't make corporation itself bad. It means understand what corporation is and understand when someone creates a corporation and tries to pull you into that jurisdiction, whether or not you belong there or if you agreed to it, i.e., whether you challenge that jurisdiction that they created. And what they did, they created Negro, black, and color, a set of Christian black codes from the church that set up a system in governance that dealt with the ch movement of these living beings, which is called chattel property, in a bureaucratic manner under wardship status, wards of the state, as stock being held by the European families 
with these Asiacs who bear their name, which indicates them as property. And all certifications, certificates, et cetera, relative to those matters are f liens are filed against it by the Europeans and therefore they can smile on your face and you never know they own you. And then when you get bad treatment, they give you an argument and that argument is called racism, prejudice and stuff and you arguing that and they really stole your birthright. And individuals are missing the point. Let's, let's start with the term more, okay? I do not want the people to view more as some religion, as some some uh, um, something they, that they have, you know, that you have um, that uh, it's a religious order that black people belong to. No, more is the, your the name of your national origin, your national descent. More does not mean Muslim. My study of more tells me that there were Moors who were Christians. There were Moors who were Kemites or follow the comedic legacy. It is important that, yes, a very important facet of the Moors that went into Europe post 710 AD happened to practice the Islamic faith. But not all Moors are Muslims. You could be a Moor and not have any faith system that you followed particularly at all. Now, the reason I said this to you, and this is in, in harmony with what the brother is saying, you know, we don't need to come and know our belief systems. As you can see, every time you get into this God thing, it gets into a whole bunch of generalities and what your idea of it is, and there's a whole bunch of vagities. Why? Because it is vague. Because the concept is a fraud, and you won't admit the hypocrites that you've been, because you don't know what the hell God is. You tell these people they're morals, they say, what? What religion is that? <laughs> they are so sweet. And once we get to that, then we can understand that it was we the Moors, the Africans. Came a time in 1506, after we lost power in Spain, the Africans ruled Spain from 711. We were calling ourselves Moors. M-A-U-E-R-S, then M-O-O-R-S. I understand. So what I'm saying is that becomes confusing for us when we claim that we are something right and other people are using the term do you understand what i mean i understand completely with, with what you um, what you're saying okay okay by pheno by phenotype are you a more by phenotype no because you, a more you, doesn't exist it's a european you, word okay i am not going are you to black? play i am a person black you're so how do you argue with a man who thinks that crayons is how people are identified and then you know the man knows his nations and he's sitting there debating with him what black people are and all this stuff and trying to defend it. You, it for you to stand there even arguing with him indicates that you got two donkeys. <laughs> no, in law. However, that's your brother and you love him. You don't want him to go into that, but he want to fight you because you won't call him black. So black comes out of English. The word itself, we're getting it from English, right? I, um, I you just say, what, did, did you go to dictionary? Can't read? They know what God and Jesus, when devil's going to get his butt kicked, they don't, come on. Okay, now, this term for land in Berber is not the same word coming out of Latin for more. It's not the same word. The one in Latin has to do with darkness, night, black, black ants. Okay, that which is dark. The one that I found in North Africa is a completely different word, but be, just because it has an MR in it, they automatically assume it's the same word and they're not focused, okay? The word Moor is a medieval term that became Negro after the enslavement of the Moors. Came a time in 1506, after we lost power in Spain, the Africans ruled Spain from 711. We were calling ourselves Moors. M-A-U-E-R-S, then M-O-O-R-S. And then they, then they see us, right? And everybody here is a scholar right here. The problem that you have is that you have fake scholars who keep getting paid off that keep promoting these people as crayons, knowing that that makes them non-descendable. And individuals are missing the point. See, no, because, wait, hold on. Did, you have to be One of the things, when I talk to Dr. Wait. Ben, you know what Dr. Ben said? He what? studied the Moore schools. Dr. Moore ben, ben, when he talked about, you know, his travels, that he had the difficulties he had growing up, getting his education. He said, with all the struggles he'd been through, he never really got his solid and grounded education until he went to the Moorish universities in Spain. And he was in a time in 1506, 
after we lost power in Spain, the Africans ruled Spain from 711. We were calling ourselves Moors, M-A-U-E-R-S, then M-O-O-R-S. Point is, it's interesting, any scholar, so you, any scholar. Because you, wait, because you take a quote from Dr. Ben, right? No, that's just a quote. You, that's right, not, that's but, not no, a but, but do you understand what you're doing to the listening audience when you do stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, I'm informing you, them. Right, you're informing them, but you're also directing the conversation. I'm you're creating a bias. Exactly. Because I, we also know Dr. Ben, and many of us study with Dr. Yeah. Ben, and he said many more things. Yeah. We'll say that he went to those schools, but when they were, when he went to those schools, they weren't under no Moorish, uh, uh, Nationality. Hold up. Oh. They they wasn't that. They, they was they was That's in Spain. That's not what I said. Okay. That's okay. not what I said. Take the wax out your ears. Okay. <laughs> Take the wax out your ears. And individuals are missing the point. Dr. Joseph Ben Yakaman, who was educated in Brazil, the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico. He received his doctorate in cultural anthropology in Cuba and a second doctorate in Moorish history in Spain in addition to a law degree. But some adults have difficulty handling that. And a second doctorate in Moorish history in Spain in addition to a law degree. He is also an architect. His vocations have been as varied as his academic experiences. For example, he practiced law. But some adults have difficulty handling that. And the next voice you will hear is that of the notable Dr. Joseph A. Ben Yakuman. Please stand. Take the wax out your ears. I'm gonna be respectful because it's an elder. No, no, I just no. Don't be respectful. We're dealing with scholarship. See, my issue is this. I could take an ordinary dictionary. This is the point. Take an ordinary dictionary, a child's dictionary, any unabridged dictionary from any one of these tables, right? Any one of these tables, any one of these tables, and take you to a dictionary and take a child to a dictionary, give them basic grammar from third grade, and show anybody that they're Moors. Right? In dictionary, and it says a compound word. We know children. Let's go back to children's lessons. What's a compound word? Um, the word to put together. Oh, go ahead, girl. Oh, serious. Let me get myself together. A compound word is two or more words put together to make another word. Right? So it has right here in the dictionary black a uh, more. And it has the part of speech right under it, next to it says noun. And it says a black person, man or woman, negro. Then it has in italics, black and small case, plus, then it got more capitalized. There's an identity right there in, in, in the uh, dictionary. So now it separates the adjective from the noun. You see that? See, black or more. Any dark-skinned person, especially an African negro, Earlier black, small case, then more, and see how the black is all case, which means a straw, and is separated from more, which is a capital letter. There's the identification of these people who think they're black, right in the dictionary. See that? Mm -hmm. Spell it. M-O-O-R. All right. See how simple it is to educate children? And individuals are missing the point. That's only because they haven't been taught. They're still little boys and girls. Of course, their ego is in front of that because they grown men. They swing leader, wieners and stick. You know? <laughs> so welcome to class, Moors. <laughs> All right. Are we clear? Yes. It's in the dictionary, isn't it? It doesn't even take a scholar, does it? It just takes somebody to read it, doesn't it? It was never even really, really hidden. You tell these people they're Moors, they say, what, what religion is that? <laughs>
They are so sleep. The sorcerers did a good job. The human beings aren't crayons, but some adults have difficulty handling that. The scholars will turn around and act like they don't know nothing about the Moors. Mm -hmm. Or debating that our people aren't Moors. Plausible when deniability. All of the history indicates that's who they are. Now, that's the last legal name that our people fell in. Mm -hmm. And you know and I know that our people over, over millennia have been called many names. Some by themselves, which are legitimate, and some which are brands by Europeans, which are illegitimate. Labels. A scholar's job is to separate the wheat from the chafe, which means what are the legitimate names that we called ourselves by our forefathers? Mm -hmm. And what are the brands that was referred to us by European slaveholders mm -hmm. and more sociologists or engineers, social engineers, anthropologists. And this is why our good brother, the Honorable Noble Drew Ali, becomes such a central focal point in our history. Because it was he, according to history, that had a very strong impact on another brother that brought forward another revolution, and his name was the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was a student of the Honorable Noble Drew Ali. Elijah Muhammad came to New York after I had accepted Islam. Brother Malcolm was alive at that time and his New York minister. The first, uh, it was October 1956, I'm sorry, 55. Elijah Muhammad spoke on two men who were the forerunners to him. Noble Drew Ali was number one, and Marcus Garvey was number two. He said to us, that was the first big speech outside of a temple that I heard Elijah Muhammad speak. And on that day, he lifted Noble Drew Ali, mm -hmm. that we should honor him, respect him, and study what he did. As a forerunner, we had many who were followers of Noble Drew Ali under the name Bay and Krim and other Islamic names that came to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we never clashed. We never clash with our uh, brothers from the Moorish Science Temple. Islam to all the Moors. Mm -hmm. And let us take a moment to say that we did reach a watershed moment at Savior's Day 2014. Did you see that speech? No, I didn't. It's a speech worth watching because the Moors mm -hmm. have been kicking up a lot of dust. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at Noble Drew Ali. Here's a man that died a young man, Noble Drew Ali. He lived from 1886 to 1929. I salute my brother. He's the first man to bring Islam to us in the way he tried to bring it. And I thank him. Thank Allah. For him. Mm -hmm. So now with the internet and Facebook and social network, here come back the Moors and their teachings and all of that. So this Sunday, a couple Sundays ago, Minister Farrakhan, he did something that had never been done by a Nation of Islam leader. He put Noble Drew Ali's picture up on a big mural of all the great black leaders, uh -huh. and he gave him credit as being the man that is teaching Islam in America before anybody else. Mm -hmm. That's Minister Farrakhan said this. He said it at his say in words to paraphrase him right. that this man was teaching Islam here ahead of everybody else. That means ahead of Master Farad mm -hmm. Muhammad right. and Elijah Muhammad, right. of which in the nation of Islam you are taught under the strict religious blinder mm -hmm. or binder that no Islam was here before Farad and Elijah. Right. No knowledge was here before Farad and Elijah. Mm -hmm. 
no disrespect, because I love me some Master Farad Muhammad, right. but there was some knowledge and some organizing here before Master Farad Muhammad and Elijah. Right. And the Honorable Minister Farrakh Khan acknowledged that and affirmed that and praised Nation of Islam leader Minister Farrakh Khan, praised Noble Drew Ali, and praised the Moorish movement. There was people before he came that belonged to the Moorish Americans by Noble Drew Ali. They didn't have this on it, the moon and the star, it was blank. It was blank, but the hat was red, they were black ones and red ones. Moors is the name given to the Muslims from North Africa that invaded the Iberian Peninsula and brought Islam to Spain and Portugal and southern France. So he's calling us Moors and he dressed his followers in the fez. So this hat here is the one that we wore at the first beginning of Muslims in the city of Detroit uh, when uh, Master Farad Muhammad was here and his representative at that time in one of the times the first one that I seen was named Abdul Muhammad he wore one of these two the messenger of Allah he wore one and you might see this picture sitting out there with it on he had a one just like this, only the torso was longer. That was the first time that I seen him with the hat on, like this. The fez that the Shriners wear is the fez of the Moors. And the tassel on its top is tied down. It was not allowed to swing a full 360 degrees because they only had 33. I'm going to give you some hints. Some you might see don't have a tarsal on it, right? What is the meaning of the tarsal? What is the meaning of it? Hanging down. Well, I tell you, it means the same thing that it means when you are graduating from school. That means knowledge. This here means knowledge. Same as school, when you graduate from school, I don't know if the devil ever told a lot of our people, because so many black people now is graduating, they don't tell them everything, you know, they just let them get on out of here. Yeah, you all right, you, you hear your diploma. And then when you come out, say, what nationality are you? Oh, I'm a nigger, I'm a Negro. I'm Afro-American. You still dumb as hell. Excuse the expression. But that's true, you know. Most Negroes actually today who come out of college, graduate from college with a diploma and still don't realize that they're walking around here with their slave master's name. And if you don't think a name makes any difference, a man can come here from Africa and can be black as ink and go into Mississippi with the name Abdul Sharif and uh, uh, they'll, they'll, all of the barriers are let down. But Cassius Clay, yes. Why do you want to say Cassius Clay when Howard yes. Cosell and everybody is calling you Muhammad Ali? Now why you got to be the one of all people who's color to keep saying Cassius Clay? Why don't you call me my name, man? Well, what's your name? You told me your name was Cassius Clay a few years ago. I never told ago. you my name was Cassius Clay. Well, my name is Muhammad Ali, and you will announce it right there in the center of that ring after the fight if you don't do it now.
if you transact business in another man's name, don't talk about estates and don't talk about property because you don't even own your own body. And individuals are missing the point. The plan don't like Negroes and blacks because they're always trying to be somebody that they're not. <laughs> trying to crash everybody else's party. Of course, it doesn't seem that way on the surface, does it? <laughs> do, do you, you understand what I'm saying to you? Going around claiming to be Smith, Jones, and Johnson, and one Smith, Jones, and Johnson, you can't transact business as Smith, Jones, and Johnson because you're acting as Smith, Jones, and Johnson's agent. And so he got you on stock market as, as, as an agent. So when you sign that name, you're simply signing as an agent. Ain't your stuff. The point you can't transact business in another man's name and then claim any allodial property or right of title. That's why they always get certificates of titles. And they don't even know the certificate what title is because they don't study law. See the problem? You know, and so all these things which the Europeans have been using to take advantage of our people because they don't study and it doesn't fit their beliefs. And here we go. You only do that with people who really believe that they're niggers because that's Christian property. Chapel is French for cattle. And persons who have no nationalities are listed as wards of the state. They're listed under chattel law. And they're under occupation. So what happens in law if you're too proud or too arrogant to address that? And then think you're going to address these people's problems? Because you don't want to talk about what's really going on. Because it sounds better to talk about racism. So in law, what really happens? You're incompetent or a sellout and BS it. People who know law recognize it. People who don't know law, you know, get caught up in the moment. Because you transact business in another man's name, don't talk about estates and don't talk about property because you don't even own your own body. Because, but you got the tarsal on. And don't know your name. Look at what he said. The Moors were enslaved by reducing their mentality to that of Negroes, blacks, and colored people. As a man thinking, so is he Moors. You sleep too much. Wake up and see the seven bridges crossing in the sky. Can you see that you are a people? Not an organization. We are a people. We are a nation. And so now we have got to be about the formation of a nation in terms of our thought process. And this is why the Moors become so very important to us because if you do not understand the Moors, it's very difficult for us as a people to understand why we're in the position that we're in today. You cannot understand why we're in the, you cannot understand why we're in the position we're in today if you don't understand what happened in 1492. You cannot understand what happened in 1492 if you don't understand the Crusades. You cannot understand the Crusades if you don't understand the Moors. Because the very nature of the knowledge that the Crusaders, the Christian Europeans, got of the riches of the East, why as Columbus was on the seas in the first place, hundreds of years later, was because of what the Moors had brought into Spain. It came a time in 1506, after we lost power in Spain, the Africans ruled Spain from 711. We were calling ourselves Moors, M-A-U-E-R-S, then M-O-O-R-S. Not only that, but... Noble Drew Ali was a very influential person during the Harlem Renaissance. Because if you look at a picture, if, if you, you see a picture of, of Marcus Garvey sitting in a car and he's dressed up in his regalia. Sometimes they have a very tight shot on Marcus Garvey. But sometimes they open up that shot and there's a man sitting to his right. That man sitting to Marcus Garvey's right in that picture is the Honorable Noble Drew Ali. I've seen it. You've seen it. If you get that bigger picture in the car, right. sitting next to Marcus Mosiah Garvey, is the Honorable Noble Drew Ali. Honorable Noble Drew Ali had a very important role back in those days in terms of the formulation of African people becoming a nation within themselves. And out of this Moorish science tradition, the Honorable Noble Drew Ali was teaching a lot of science. He was teaching a lot of mathematics.
The Morris Divine National Movement, in some ways, is a reenactment of the Freedman's Bureau that was closed in 1870, which was supposed to be a reacclimation of your birthright, giving you back your names, your religion, your principles, and bringing you back into the constitutional fold. And what did the politicians do? They robbed the money and closed it. That's how they enslaved you. You've been gamed. And you've been gamed by your own people who sold out, even in this movement. So you need to understand the principles. Remember this. Do not go by, oh, you like this guy, you like that woman, oh, they sound good, oh, they dress nice, I like the way they talk. Bull, principles is what you operate on. That's how you tell who's who. Because the principles are based in fundamental truths that don't change or pass away. Measure them by the truth. Okay, now does anybody understand that? Yeah. Okay, now I've been hearing this for years and I study all kind of law and I ain't understood it yet. I have every, I love the, I mean tell you this, as, as Allah is my witness, Islam to all the Moors. I have nothing but respect for Prophet Noble Juali. And, but he did not teach what these Moors is out here teaching today. They have come up with some whole new teaching. Deal. When you're talking jurisprudence, they'll tell you law. It ain't law, it's jurisprudence. When you measure it, and you measure anyone dealing in government, measure them by the Constitution. Don't measure them by a party. Don't measure them by what they say. Only if what they say harmonize with their limited delegated authority that we gave to them to govern your affairs. They're servants. But what they've done is made you the servant. That's the corruption. Do you understand that? You are operating conceptually that this is supposed to be this way because this is government, you know, and you got paper. They don't really represent you, they're thieves. They take, took over your government. And, and then, as an example, you see the Constitution says, Article 4, Section 4 guarantees for every state in this union a Republican form of government. And then you turn around and you tell your children this is a, a democracy because the politician told you that. And you don't even challenge it even in your own mind. That's slavery. And it's a pact you just made with them. And so you've created, you've agreed to a fraudulent jurisdiction that they created. And then it makes it legal because you agree. But some adults have difficulty handling that. Okay, now does anybody understand that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now I've been hearing this for years and I study all kind of law and I ain't understood it yet. You need to pay attention to their obligation. The Constitution is their obligation. That's not some instrument that, oh, you know, it's interesting if you all know something about it. And if you don't, oh, it's not important. Why do you think politicians don't teach Constitution to the children in schools? Because that's the document that gives them the authority to do what, everything that they're doing. Without the Constitution, there is no government. Once you understand that, you understand where you need to be to protect your Moorish birthright. And the Moorish birthright is to protect the Constitution and to enforce the Constitution. The abuses that you've been getting is because that document has not been enforced. It has not been enforced because you ain't been in your proper person. Y'all been busy being colored people. Do you understand where I come from? So concept of mind, get out of it. You're not Negro, black, and colored, and you gotta be that, not that, officially. That's what nationalization process is for. That's why he did it. Do you understand? These have political ramifications. So it changes your political status in the society for the record. That's number one, because it's documented now. You see what I'm saying? So that gives you a standing at law across the world. Now, do you know what to do with that? That's the next issue. Do you know how to proceed with that? Those are the parts of the information that was suppressed by the subversives, COINTELPRO, etc., that was inverted into this movement with the FBI, CIA, etc., which is really the OSS, to subvert this movement. Having the people think it's a religious movement when actually it's a movement to bring people back into the constitutional fold of government and to enforce that constitution for the protection of all the peoples. But he knew that they could not be protected as Negro, Black, and Colored because that's a category of a caste system. It's not human. It is not human. It does not pertain to humanity. It, it is outside of the human family, therefore outside the law, therefore outlaws. <laughs> Black power. Black power. Black power. 
because they want you to think it's an identity. Color means actually artificial person, means a fake. Singer Lakeham, as distinguished from that which is real. So they need promoters to make you think it's real, to take you out of the human family. Now you come under the black codes, this is where your abuses come from legally. Because it's an agreement. Because every man, woman, and child must honor their mothers and fathers. You're no different. I like, I, we like to think we are. But you're really not different. So what do you do with outlaws? Do whatever you please to do with them, particularly if you have power. This is the arrogance that the magistrates have been using as judges. Do you understand? Because they know the people don't have rights because they won't claim them. Not, and then the people think that the only way they're going to get them is that if they give them to you. Governments do not give rights. Governments are established to protect existing rights. Those rights are inalienable that is in reference to government. And the inalienable right is derivative of your birthright, which means it's non-transferable. It can't be sold to you. You can't license it. Once you understand that, hold them to it. And they're obligated when they take that oath of office to uphold that constitution. And if you start talking about Republican Party and Democratic Party and all that kind of crap, and you start getting into their private matters because it's private policy, and you let them enforce that crap, you just gave up your birthright. This is what has happened to us. I have nothing but respect for Prophet Noble Juali. And but he did not teach what these Moors is out here teaching today. They have come up with some whole new teaching. Yeah, what is civics? Civics is the science of government, rights of citizenship, and duties of citizenship. When I spoke to, uh, when we put out the I'm Rockin' Star, I'm Rockin' Star was a newspaper that I was the editor in chief of. Taz Tariq Bay was the assistant editor in chief. And uh, we, I sent the papers to um, a grand sheik in Mississippi. The grand sheik in Mississippi sent one, one of the issues. He, I called him and see if he received the papers. He said he had received the papers. And he said to me that Juali did not teach that. I said, all right, all right, what is that? What does that denote? All right, Duali didn't teach constitution principles. I said, all right. In the divine warning, in the divine warning, that's the name of a, that's the name of a speech that Duali gave. Duali said, it is a sin, using sin connotatively, it is a sin for any group of people to violate the free national laws of a constitutional government and to claim the names and principles that do lead to slavery. And once I said that to him, he said, oh. But why do you just, he just said, oh. This is the Grand Sheik in one of the temples, more science temple in Mississippi. Because he just thought I didn't, didn't, didn't read. I read. Mm -hmm. So you can't come to me and say, Juali and then teach civics when Juali, in his divine warning, he said that to not understand the Constitution is a sin. See, we need a think tank just on this book alone. It's the biography of Noble Jew Ali. I am so happy and so relieved, I should say content, that somebody took the time. The brother's name is uh, Elihu. I just want to make sure. Elihu. Elihu Pleasant Bay. And I appreciate this brother taking time, the exhuming of a nation where it talks about the noble Drew Ali because he was a fundamental piece to our, our existence in the beginning of the 20th century. It's something that we have to start looking at as a people and we have to start answering very important questions about what we should be teaching our children and how we should be teaching our children because we're not teaching them properly. Our intentions, we have the best intentions but if the methodology is not there, the more is used to teach See, the Moors were the libraries, were the collected libraries of all ancient wisdom up until that point. And the Moors of their time took this information and took it to a higher level. To think that Africans brought into Europe sidewalks, streets lit by lamps for miles that you could walk, 
to think that the Moors were able to control the flow of water so that water could flow into your home where you could get both hot and cold water. That they could build according to the wind systems so that you had air conditioning in uh, the warmer weather and heat in the cooler weather. This is what the Moors brought in. The Moors brought in strawberries and, and lemons. They brought in different ways of eating. They brought in the idea of eating in courses. They started the first musical conservatory in Europe. The first musical school was created by Moors. Every and almost every major university was created with people sitting at the feet of African people. And some of them became so smart that they moved from Spain and France under Alphonse X and moved to England. And they started the universities that we today call Oxford and Cambridge. Some of these people from Oxford and Cambridge became so smart they came to these new colonies and they started a college that's called King's College in New York City. And now we are so proud to say that we are some of the first people to attend Columbia University, yet we don't know that we built Columbia University. This is a part of our history that's totally lost. And that is because, as Charles Seifert, who was an expert on Ethiopia, said, a people without knowledge of their culture is like a tree without its roots. People can sell you anything if you don't know who you are. And individuals are missing the point. You want to solve this problem or you're not going to be here. That's my suggestion. Because the Romans are going to carry out their mission whether you act or not. Because they have an agenda. And right now their agenda is survival. They know they're in somebody else's house, but they also know that you're asleep because you think we Indians. Yeah, we Kitawa, Nanako, Lena Lenape, my mother's side, grandma's side, Blackfoot, my father's side, Cherokee, Kitawa. But I ain't Indian, I'm Moabite. And this ain't India. India is in Asia, and I'm not confused, and Santa Claus ain't real either, and bunny rabbits don't lay chicken eggs. <laughs> However, you know and I know that our people spend billions of dollars a year on their fiction because it makes them feel good, and they sell their babies out by the day. If you look up the word black, first you put a, you put a time in it, and then you go, you go to M-E, and then you look at Middle English, and that means what? You're dealing with 1100s, 15s in that area? So already the scholar knows that black is not ancient. It doesn't even go past the 1100s. So when they're talking about the ancient black gods of Egypt, scholars know they're lying. But believers don't know better because they got the mentalities of boys and girls. You know, Pharaoh was black. Jesus was black. <laughs> this is what a scholar knows. So you go to the Middle English, right, and you put a date on it. Then it traces to OHG. OHG is Old High German, and it means pale. See why they laugh at these people? And if a prophet comes to rescue them, they'll help the Romans assassinate him, and then talk about how great he was, and put his, line his picture up from Yahshua that they called Jesus lie on him, right on up to Il Malik, that they refuse to call Il Malik to say Malcolm X. Anybody who comes to rescue them, they will sell them out. Because they like to paint pictures. They like to talk about how great they was. The Harry Tubmans, Ida B. Wells, all the rest of them. They sell them out left and right. Because they don't love their own. They're the greatest hypocrites on the planet. I suggest to you, if you're standing here, and you just happen to be standing on your porch, with your little kitty cat in your arm, and confusion starts across the street, Right? Because some cops or someone used color of law and beat up somebody who's branded Negro. Right? And sick their dog on them. The dog bites them all up and all this stuff. Right? Because me and he's the brothers that jumped his own brothers last week. Whatever. I suggest that you take your cat in the house immediately so they don't see you. Don't worry about what they're doing to him. Because they will not come and get that dog. They will not mess with those cops that beat Rodney King. They'll come burn your house down. That's what Negroes do. Do you understand what I'm saying? They always injure innocent people.
They love injuring innocent people that never did anything to them and have no courage to fight those who bring injury to them. That's another reason why the civilized world has no respect for people who are branded Negro, Black, and Color because they know they're savages. But they also know they're not going to say it to you to your face because you go might burn their stuff down. But they will set up shop and make li living off you because you give up your birthright easily. And they're going to tell them what Jesus wants. And then put them up in the up in the grand houses that you build as a Roman, as a European, when you know he had dreadlocks. More by Canaanite blood. Look just like you and me. As a former attorney, one of the things I have come to realize is there are Moorish American city officials, Moorish American law enforcement officers, Moorish Americans who fight and serve this country. One of the things we looked at last year was the amount of documentation that were filed in the courts or posted online most of which had nothing to do with the MST of A. There has been some attempts made by the mainstream media and journalists alike to link the MST of A with the sovereign citizens movement. Moorish Americans are not sovereign citizens. We had a Moorish American who was detained for doing nothing more than giving his religious title and ID. However, the officer was untrained and made an unlawful arrest of failure to ID. We worked with that Moorish American's temple to get him released immediately. Moorish Shield not only works with fixing these issues at the court level, but we are also working with city officials and municipalities to get police officers the proper training and familiarity with the law-abiding Moorish American organizations. Moorish Americans are not African American or black. And then people sit around there, they don't know we Moors. Oh, please. That's why we took them to, to Alexandria, Virginia, to show them with these Europeans wearing your fez with Elon Bay on it. Because they keep debating with us, and then other people trying to sell them packages with a clock of destiny, trying to make it seem like they own this thing. This is your birthright, no matter what organization it comes from. You're saying, I can't own it, and no one else can own it. Temple can't own it. All Noble Drawley did is bought it and made you conscious of it. Now what you want to do with it? That's right.